Hello, Brian. This is Victor here. And I'm going to install your throttle body back in the car today. So, obviously throttle body is repaired. I had it done a couple of days ago. New hose is attached. So this is the one that you want to have replaced regardless because you're gonna have to squash it to install the throttle body back in. The original one, you really break that off. We do have new gasket, obviously. We do have new boot for mass airflow sensor. The throttle body housing it goes this way. This one is made in Germany. Who's, who's, the, make, who's the maker? Hmm. Strange. I don't see the maker. Well, it is what it is, but I know that I buy these well, better, you know, better quality than just, just uh, sometimes, most of the time I buy these um, yeah, my um, This is the old one, obviously, the, the actual clamps here, they will have to be migrated to a new, um, to new, boot all right also i did lubricate the linkage just a little bit you know those little attachment points because uh, they were pretty much you know rusty i don't know if you can see that let me try to show you that yeah, there's a little bit of grease that i installed okay <clears throat> so that is that and throttle body will be going back in now all right I can't be making a video right now and <clears throat> recording and installing the throttle body. So I guess I'll just make a couple of add-ons to this video so you can actually see the progress as I go along repairing, you know, reinstalling it. Also the rubber, a rubber little rubber holes all the way there I mean I'm trying to see what I'm shooting at but yeah that's the holes that you do check and it seems to be in good condition vacuum line is still in decent condition as well so we're gonna leave that for now all right so I'll be adding to this video as I go okay Brian so throttle body is installed parts are all installed and I had to remove the pipe. I don't know, I guess I'm getting older. <laughs> I could do it without removal the pipe, but whatever, I removed it, I retightened it, so everything's fine here. I will put a little bolt here, everything's back in place. So a new rubber boot, throttle, a pipe, the hose. Should you want to replace the rest, that's fine. You can just cut, cut the salt pipe here, remove it, and then you can uh, attach a new pipe or you can even replace intermediate piece this little uh, intermediate piece that hold both uh, pipes together okay throttle linkage seems to be okay and I also spoke too early for the vacuum line that went behind the throttle body sure enough it broke in pieces it's not as horrible as I've seen them but bad enough so I just replaced it Throw it away. Also goes for the rubber piece right here. This one is starting to wear out, so I put new silicone piece over there. Rubber, rubber end. The rest of the line is actually okay, but we're still not reusing this. Now, the length of the cable is original. That's how it's supposed to be. Uh, although it actually would run down so I'll see if I can keep it here or not I don't know yet in theory the wire usually goes down this way so actually maybe I'll just leave it like that the wires that I use here very high quality cables they're not going to melt or anything like that so no questions there and I also see that you siliconed or whoever siliconed the vacuum distribution block that's pretty good 
Um, then basically that's it. <clears throat> I fed the new vacuum line all the way straight to ignition module. Um, at this point I can start the car. I'm basically ready to start the vehicle. I did not, I'm not putting the air cleaner on. We should be okay. Although if there is no air cleaner, wind gust can actually alter mass airflow sensor readings and engine might actually go up and down with the RPM, sometimes even stall. So I guess we'll just start the engine and see what is the result here. Okay. So, put on the ignition, we'll go listen for throttle body first. Learning curve. Just wait. Doesn't want to go into learning. I guess it is learned already. Usually within a minute. There it goes. That's good. Okay, that's it. So it went through learning. And now we can start the engine. <clears throat> oh, hello. Quite squeaky, are we? The belt squeals a little bit. Let me take a listen where it squeals. I'll get me my... Well... Yeah, let me get something here to check the belt squeal. I'm basically gonna try to listen. It sounds like it's coming from this. No. Right here is more pronounced water pump. And I'm not sure yet. Hold on. This is quiet. Air pump is loud, but it doesn't really work much. Alternator is loud too, but alternator is under load right now because the car hasn't run. It wasn't running for a while. So I think it's more like a water pump sound. Hopefully it'll go away. Air pump doesn't really matter much. Noise quietens down. We can try to do is we can try to spray. I'll, I usually spray silicone. Obviously shouldn't do it but it is what it is you just try to see if it quietens it down not really nope belt is, belt is saturated but It's all shiny now because of the silicone spray, but noise remains. I think your water pump will need to be replaced if it starts to make louder sound. Idler seems to be fine. Air pump seems to be fine, but water pump here. Yeah, water pump makes just slight noise. So, just so you know, this is quiet. Okay, so that is another little thing to be sorted out. Water. 
So now it's wiping this down. See, of course, it warms up. Silicone usually leaves shine on plastic, on, on plastic surfaces. So. Okay, now, we're not here for shine. We're here for idle. The engine runs really, really nice now. That is what I see. Objective here is to try to get idle, hopefully, to be what it is right now. 650 is very nice. I mean, this is really good idle. So I'll just wait, uh, warm the engine and see how it acts when it gets hot. I'll put on, actually, no, I'm not gonna put on lights. Let it be. All right, the next part is coming up after engine is warm. Okay, so now engine has been running for a little bit of time. I would say, I would say about 10 minutes or so. So right at the moment, temperature is close to operational temperature. So far, so good. The idle speed is 650. This is really good. I mean, I really like it. Well, about around 650. Acceleration is good. As long as it remains around there, I'm good. Let me put on, for now, we're not at the operational temperature as of yet, but um, because when it heats up, then, and obviously when it's in drive, the idle speed might go lower. So far we're at around mm, 525 and going down. See, I don't like idle speed on these cars. It would have been so nice if they would have been just like normal S-Class, sitting at 650 or so. Okay, so, because there is more, when the idle is so low, it just wants to quit, actually. Almost it wants to quit, the engine. Especially if you load it up with AC and everything, it's just way too low. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat it up. I think it went up slightly, maybe, after cleaning the throttle body. I think it was even lower than this. It's like 525, I think it was around 5. So we gained just a little bit of idle. But I'm going to show you another EGAS module that will bring idle up to normal. But after engine warms up, then I'll show you that. Okay, so now we have engine fully warmed up. And the idle speed is 650 in neutral or park. It's in park right now, of course. So let's go in gear now when we're in gear idle is like 525 what i'm gonna do is i'm going to show you the idle that i like and then we'll compare the two uh, also when you're at such low idle there is rumbling coming from exhaust the engine vibration is higher you feel it it recovers in park but Basically, these cars, 129s, engines, for some reason, they're set to work around 500 plus or minus 50. I don't understand why they did it, but it is what it is. So, we're installing EGAS from 500 SEL or S500 M119, but it's going to be from 140 chassis, of course, as you can see, 140, 140 chassis. Now, it was made in 93, it appears, so that's probably from uh, SEL. Although SEL, 500 SEL number would be like 1632, if I remember correctly, 
1532 something like that lower number 7232 that's like higher number i don't know why it's there with 93 sticker it is what it is see yours is 08 also made in 93 okay and now we're going to start the engine and we'll compare two idols i'm not going to even learn the throttle body just going to start it as this Starts off the same way, of course, but this is the idle speed in park, of course, or in park, and we're going to go in gear. The engine has to be warm because that's going to show the difference in idle. Right now, there's less vibration because idle speed is higher. Um, it's actually even higher in park than original e-gas just slightly very very little all right so we're going drive now so we are in drive and as you can see the idle speed stays around eh, like 625 or so and it is not lowering there is less rumble from exhaust the vibration is uh, minimized um, less shaking, less rumbling, and as you can see, idle remains. It doesn't go down as we just saw <clears throat> with the original EGAS module. It's just the way they set up. Unfortunately, cruise control will not operate, but it's much, much better. I seriously feel like we put on the climate control, so you see compressor will kick in, so it's going to cycle now. As you can see, idle is not dropping. Let's load up the, the engine with steering wheel all the way to the left. As you can see, idle remains. Steering wheel all the way to the left. I mean to the right now. As you can see, I'm still in drive and idle is much, much nicer. If I go back to park, I'm in park slightly changed slightly higher very nice I mean that's just like I'm just used to these idols it's just the way that I feel at all M119 should be and in this case with the original module and I've tried another module from another one R129 and I've seen lots of R129s and always the same situation idols too low people do complain about low idle and um, it's just We're in drive now again, as you can see. Obviously, with idle being higher, a car will roll easier if you let go of the brake, if you're in drive or in, in reverse. But that's just, you know, because it is. But it feels so much nicer. It's just no question about it. No question about it. Go back and park. As you can see, it went up slightly, then it stabilized back to it's hard to say with the actual needle here on the gauge it's around 650 or so, so it's plug give or take so as you can see this is something that I like more I like this idle way more than the one that comes original with this vehicle and I might show it to you again I guess yeah, let's just do it. Let's just go and swap out EGAS modules once more to compare both idols. Let's take a look at that. Let's do that. Real quick, I'm gonna do that. And then, again, this is 140 module. We're removing this module. I want to be installing original 129 module. There it goes all the way in. Always have to go all the way in. Okay, Let's start the vehicle. Okay, it's running. Drop down to 
about about the same as we saw with another module maybe just just maybe no it's about the same yeah it's about the same AC is on and we're going to drive here we are in drive as you can see how much lower the side is and I started to hear rumble again it's like I hear each and every explosion and it's kind of low if we're gonna load this up as you can see I'm loading up the engine it drops to like five 500 510 the other one did not do so the other one kept idle high so I'm not liking this I mean I, I'm sorry it's just just like I, I don't like this and just how they these are when you have everything loaded like you got AC running you got lights on um, you turn the wheel to the left all the way and your drive with brake depressed yeah, I don't know it's just too low to me I think back in park seen park idle hovers around 625 maybe where the other one would have been higher like 650 660 this one hovers around this low okay anyway I just wanted to show you this so Brian you know what to do it's your decision what you want to do with this module um, I would replace it I mean I would sacrifice cruise control if you would need cruise control you can always install your original module say for a long trip but uh, if you just drive locally I would definitely would have 140 e gas in this vehicle really to be honest um, one thing that we'll try doing is I actually will try to run the car and see if I can get cruise control to activate if it will activate great if not most likely it won't but we we'll never know I have this theory of mine that I might be able to do something with these um, e gas modules but that's just a theory I was thinking of replacing a couple of chips inside the module just to make it think that it's 129 model but the idle setting would have been higher because I'm using the guts the boards from 140 so I might be able to do something like that I'll when I if I have some time I will experiment on that and see if I can get this to go higher Drilling the hole in the throttle body, making it bigger, I don't think it's a good idea because then you can go too much and then it will never be able to correct that problem. You can have too high of an idle. So, for today, I'm pretty much finished. It's getting late and just gonna put on the cover, put it back on, and then basically that would be all. That would be all. The throttle is good. You know. Oh yeah, somebody already did some reinforcement here because this pocket broke. So I do it a little differently. I can show you later when I see you, like how you can reinforce this so it actually remains. But that's the next step. So far, so good. Okay. So I guess this would be all for me for this series. I guess. You have a couple of things that I mentioned. The water pump bearing is making a little noise. You know that. Just, just so you know, I yeah I mentioned that. And the vacuum tube replaced, and then covers to go back on, and off they go. All right. So this is it. This is Victor at Restoreyourmercedes.com, and thank you for watching.